everybody, it's Diana of Diana's Dreams. Ah, boy, I want to talk to you about divorce. You ready? I went through. And, um, I'm still in it. I'm in it to win it. But I'm still, like, in, in, in the recovery of, I guess I'll put it that way. Um, I married him too soon after my previous husband passing away not even a year ahead of me marrying the third husband. My previous husband had heart failure and diabetes and I, I took care of him for 12 years but we were together 22 before he passed away. Um, there's a lot to that, me being with um, my second husband. That's a whole nother story I'm trying to say. But I wasn't ready to remarry someone that soon, and I didn't even know it. I thought I was, and I thought I was putting myself in a better situation um, regarding the people that were still left and the home that I was living with with, with my second husband. So I guess I do have to dive in that a little bit. I had a situation with my daughter and my husband's younger brother doing drugs together in our in our home and he and my second husband younger brother lived downstairs and my daughter I was taking care of her children while this was going on didn't know and I did none of it came to light until right before my husband passed away and I had a lot of Knowing that, that that was heavy in his heart, too. He's Native American like I was, and he really loved her, my daughter, and he was really upset by the things that she did. And and I, I think that's a whole nother, a whole nother subject, like I said. Um, so I, I felt that I was safer with a strange man than my own family. Well, it was a different experience. Um, is uh, the third husband? I didn't see him for who he was at first, and that's because I was not healed. Um, it was my second husband. I didn't have the authority to even think those things, you know, and um. I, in a lot of ways, things were good, but in a lot of ways, things were not good. Um, he liked to drink, and he liked to drink heavy. And this third husband, my my second husband, was, um, he actually was a recovering alcoholic, and he stopped drinking before I even met him. And I don't, I'm not a, I don't like drinking, so no issues there. Um... When I was with the third husband, no, I would drink like a um a Corona and then I switch to Sprite, you know, but never no more than that. And I would watch this man down like a cup to a cup and a half of 120 proof before we went out to go out for the the night, right? And, and there'd be times where he'd fall down the steps, going out the door, and I'd be like, "See you when you get back. I ain't going." Cause he's driving. I ain't going. And, and that was after um, six months in our marriage. He was so drunk. I didn't. I didn't know that um, he actually wasn't handling this liquor. I was very, very naive. And uh, in his defense, he wanted to go home and get the car and come back and get me. And we were like five minutes from home. And I'm like, just walk home if you don't want me on the bike. And he said the bike is uh, stuck in second gear. And I didn't get that part either. He's like, he's, you're going to have to hold on when I stop. Pouring down rain. He couldn't get the key fob open, so he couldn't get the garage door open. And we had to stop in the drive path of our home. And we had a plane because of the oil. And we crashed right into that garage door. 
and I um, had shoulder surgery not knowing that my neck was fractured in two places and then they fixed my neck and they didn't know that my lumbar was cracked in two places at my hip and then also I had a hip issue and a knee issue and I lost nine teeth over here because his elbow fell into my mouth and um it caused a whole slew of 12 surgeries in which I ended up in the hospital and he ended up having his open marriage that he wanted that he'd been asking for since right after we got married and I'm like what? no <laughs> no and um now now, now you've done been cut off now you're gonna have to go get sexually tested to be with me again And I get home from the hospital and he goes up to the pharmacy to pick up my prescriptions and then there's hookers knocking on the door. And I'm like, no. So that was in 2017 and I married him in 2014 and I left him in January 2021. And so I had cut him off sexually years before I left him. We had a we had an agreement, and he wasn't old enough to his own, and he wasn't happy about it either. So he can have his open marriage because I left. I took all the belongings that I could, and I left the door open when I left. And I told him, "Here's your open marriage. I ain't going back." And he knows. What did he do? <laughs> now I'm much younger than him almost 10 years and he what, did, what did he do when he knew I was absolutely leaving he tried to get with his ex-wife that he had left 20 years before he married me she wasn't having any of it either she's like <laughs> no 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 I don't do little boys 360 to 80 pound men Well, if I was standing next to him, it would be like Dr. Phil and, and I would be Robin. So, because I'm 150 most times. So, like 160 right now. Um, I, I had to go. And I'm, I'm saying to you, if, if this sounds like you, look, the man was forcing me at one point to use my metal mar me medical marijuana card that I wasn't even on when I met him. Then now, when I when I met him, and, and then I became disabled because of a motorcycle accident, he wants me to, to get him a uh, card, and then, then I realized he's wanting me to purchase so he can give to his friends without even ever being a profit, but it would be on my hours, right? Now, I immediately told the Delaware police, uh, Wilmington, Delaware police, what's going on and that I won't be renewing my card and uh, I'm leaving them and, and they knew and uh, I did I did renew my card I did try again and he, he started arson with me again and, and I said no right now so uh, there was just too much keeping me like a pumpkin shell. I, I couldn't get, I had to sell my truck, I bought a car, I had to sell that because I couldn't afford to work or cover the insurance costs or any kind of maintenance costs on my vehicles because he kept me down. I couldn't sew. And when I could so, all I thought about was my previous life of with my second husband and me having a sewing business in our home, altering wedding gowns, altering prom gowns, 
working for the fire department, police department, navy, and army up there, um, hemming pants. So, like, they would give me fifteen hundred to two thousand at one time, and I was charging five dollars a pair. Where others were trying to charge fifteen to twenty a pair, and and I got the work because I did the job faster and I charged half the price. And it was easy work to do that. And, you know, that's something that I can do anywhere, right? Or, or, or at any time. I'm saying all this because um, I've noticed something about after I've left divorce that I'm, like, taking steps. You know? And, uh... I started out in my son's home in a nursery and went applying everywhere for housing and I'll get into the other, that into another video. And I ended up in uh, Jacksonville in a, in a projects building for seven months and then they moved me right back down here. <laughs> I would have stayed here if I'd have known. And uh, now I'm in Palm Beach uh, housing for elderly, I am 66 and um, disabled, but you don't have to be disabled, you have to be elderly, and it's a uh, section eight housing here. So what I'm saying is this, this, this housing here is just a temporary thing, and uh, it's just the next step on to home ownership, you know, and uh, I'm now able to put myself back into sewing without having those tears that I had. Had to buy a whole nother sewing machine to do it. <laughs> it's funny how a little thing like a sewing machine can trigger you, right? Um, I have overcome the whole lot of things, including all those medications that doctors had me on after spine surgeries and, and, and all the other surgeries you can imagine. I have let go of, so that's a whole nother subject too. I I will be individualizing everything that you see in this video and talking more about each one is what I'm letting uh, you know. I, you know me, I like to keep my videos under 15 minutes. Um, I don't, I don't want to ramble or bore anyone, so I, I want you to know that there's, I know there's others out there that men are abusing, or, because it, it can happen the other way around, right? It could be the woman that's abusing the husband. It, it's very much so. I've seen that in, in um, you know, other relationships. I've seen, I've seen women like that. It's horrid. Uh, to take advantage of another person. And, you know, I'm not perfect. I, you know, we all have we all have those 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 uh, skeletons in our closet, I guess, you know, where you might not even hurt someone on purpose, but they still got hurt, you know? So, uh, the divorce, I never believed in until I married this man. And then I was like, yeah, I guess that's, that's my uh, recourse out. And the Lord has led me through. And I have overcome so, so much. And, you know, I, I just had a, um, I, I just had a happy, a happy thing happen last week. Let me show you. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, flip it. You see that trash can? I didn't have that here before last week. I'm three years out of divorce and I bought myself my first kitchen trash can. I said, you know how much that dang thing cost? Thirteen dollars. Had I known I would have done it sooner. I said, nope. I need this before I need that. I need that before I need this. And I said the same thing about divorce. 
letting go of people that don't fit you. I'm not going to have this with my nose. <laughs> the sun is so intense here in South Florida. There we go. You are sitting on a tripod. And um, I'm able to hold her and just move her around slowly without all the shaking and things like that going on. Okay. Um, I am letting you know that all the subjects that I talked about today, I think I said this already. Yeah, it, it's getting split up. Uh, look on my channel for playlists. And... Yes, my eyes change color depending on my mood. They can go from this blue to very, very dark brown. Don't know why. Uh, so you will you will be... <laughs> Some people are like... Oh, I, I even got a, a comment on, on a video a while back before I, I even know about uh, Dodash. And she says, how many contacts do you own? I'm like... I don't, no, no, I don't, I don't put contacts in my eyeballs, no, or on my eyeballs. I try, but, um, it doesn't work. It, it just, I, I just want to do that number, right? And I'm like, nah, I don't want that in there. Uh, so I'm like that with a lot of things in life. If, if it doesn't fit, it's got to go, right? And you might, um, you might decide that, to take a look at, at, at your life and see if there's something in it that has to go, right? Sometimes you have to close the door to open the window of new seasons, you know? Sometimes you have to slam that window to have a door of opportunities come to you. So take a look at around at your life and see what's got to go. It's not just about bringing YouTube in or having a YouTube channel. It's about using it as a tool to help others and to let go and to bring in. Because sometimes you have to let go of things to get better things. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what I see. And that's why I let go. You know, um, I might change that black trash can for a gold one someday. It's not about what is on the outside of it. It's the, you know, I feel so much better having a kitchen trash can. <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> I just did. Love y'all. Bye.